So now we are going to discuss about neurovascular pathologies. Neurovascular pathologies means pathologies related to blood vessels of the brain. Okay, and of course the spinal cord as well. So the pathologies that we are going to consider here are the first and most important thing are the aneurysms. Then we will go into AVMs that is arteriovenous malformations. Then we will discuss about cavernomas, about uh, dural AV class and uh, carotica cavernous fist class. So all these are the topics that we are going to discuss in this module. And uh, to begin with, we will begin our discussion on the neurovascular pathologies with the very comprehensive description of the neurovascular anatomy. So when you read anatomy along with these pathologies, the understanding and the remembrance of the anatomy is very easy and it makes neurosurgery or in fact neuroanatomy as such quite easy to understand. So for that, we will now begin our discussion with neurovascular anatomy. Anatomy of CNS blood vessels. So what is important in this anatomy is you we have to know some of the quite important branches that are related to the various vessels and some of the common sites where aneurysms happen are based on these branching pattern okay so first thing is first things first you have an anterior cranial circulation and you have a posterior cranial circulation okay anterior cranial circulation means entirely the cerebral hemispheres are being supplied by this anterior cranial circulation and then you have a posterior cranial circulation which is going to supply the cerebellum and the brain stem and there will be few anastomoses between them so that in total makes the circle of villus okay so that in total makes the circle of villus so you know the major contributor for the anterior cranial circulation is going to be the internal carotid artery the internal carotid artery is a division or the terminal division of the common carotid artery okay at the level of c4 vertebra at the level of c4 vertebra the common carotid artery will divide into internal carotid artery and external carotid artery at the level of c4 vertebral level okay c4 predominantly c4 sometimes it can happen at c3 as well so from then on the internal carotid artery will go so the internal carotid artery is essentially here along the neck and it is going to go up and enter into the cranial cavity via the temporal bone okay so it is going to enter into the tem into the intracranial cavity via through its course along the temporal bone petrous part of the temporal bone and then it will go into the cavernous sinus and then finally it will get into the brain as such in the into the subarachnoid space okay so to understand the anatomy of the internal carotid artery we will discuss the internal carotid artery into we will divide the internal carotid artery into seven segments okay we are going to divide the internal carotid artery into seven segments this was done for easier understanding and to make the radiological features based on anatomical incorporating the anatomical landmarks and naming them in that way is going to help us understand each and every part and this was done by a person called as Bauthiller okay B O U T H I L L E R so this was the person who divided the internal carotid artery into seven segments so totally we are going to discuss all the seven segments to be frank this seven segments is so easy you don't have to worry that it is seven in number no you don't at all have to worry it is going to be very easy if you can follow me as we proceed so first thing i'll name all the seven segments because that is going to be the first step so from we are going to name it from below above so c1 would be the cervical part and c7 would be the intracranial part okay so c1 we are going from below above c1 will be cervical C2 will be petrous, C3 will be lacerial, C4 will be cavernous, C5 will be clinoidal, C6 
will be ophthalmic c7 will be communicating okay so these are the seven segments